God's timing is perfect. You know, there's so many people that want to know their callings and stuff. But I, I always tell them, well, you got to wait. God's preparing you to be able to receive it. I look back and that's what God did for me. Like I was a couple years before that, I was crying out, Lord, what's my calling? I'll do anything. But I didn't mean it from my heart because I hadn't surrendered everything yet. So he He led me to pursue acting at first. <laughs> he He knew what he was doing. He put hunger in me until I got to the point where I had surrendered everything. Hi, welcome to Cultural Catalyst, where we teach you how to live fully alive, co-labor with God, and change the world. And today I have one of the most interesting guests I've ever had on, Cultural <laughs> Catalyst. Thanks for being here. Catherine Crick. Did I get it right? Yes. Oh my gosh. And Catherine, you've been in the ministry now for eight years or something like that, right? Yes. And I I, we, I have to confess, like I saw you on YouTube and on social media casting out demons prophesying over people and I'm like this is this this lady she is like she's she's part of our movement right here Amen. or like we're part of yours or something <laughs> but super excited to have you on can you just share first of all a little bit of your own your own testimony like how'd you find the lord yeah so you do know the lord right i do okay, good, i love good. the lord yes so i actually never have known a day not believing in god because i was raised by amazing christian parents that's amazing and so actually my earliest memory that I have is age four, being on the couch in the living room and mom just asked, my mom asking me, do you wanna give your life to Jesus? And I just simply said, yes. And I remember that. You still remember it? Yeah. That's a problem. And um, I've always loved God. I've always believed in him. I've never doubted his, he was real or his love for me and that his plans for me were good. But um, I never knew about the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, really how close he is in us, living in us. And I also didn't know how to have a relationship with God for a long time until I was in my mid-20s. And you, you were raised as a Presbyterian, right? Yes. That's amazing. And now, like, the power of God flows through your life. You're living in L.A.? Yes. You are, uh, you're the lead uh, uh, apostle? Of a church called five, what's it called? Fivefold. Yes, fivefold. Fivefold church. church, pretty powerful, and that's fairly new church, right? Yes, twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Yeah, that's pretty. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so now you're gonna have to tell us a story. Like, how did you start moving the power of God? Yeah. So actually, I moved from upstate New York, from a tiny town, to LA in 2013. And at that time, I was trying to find my calling, and I was asking God, "What do you want me to do with my life?" I felt He was leading me to pursue acting at the time. Yeah. I Looking read back, I know that was just His way, like His breadcrumbs of leading me to the city, <laughs> of where He would un uh, unfold my calling. Um, and so looking back, it was very much like Abram land, and then he moved me to Abraham land. And when I got to the city of LA, just this fire ignited in me for Jesus like never before. Prior to that, I, I once I hit uh, high school age, I was lukewarm. Looking back, I know it's because I never actually met Jesus. I believed in him. I loved him, but I wasn't yet in love with him because I hadn't actually met him. Wow. And so like, I knew it was right to surrender, but I struggled. There was something holding me back. But when I got to LA, this fire erupted in me, like this hunger, like God put this hunger in me. So it's like just Abraham- Spontaneously or did, were you in a meeting or did something happen? Well- Or you just driving down the road one day and it's like all of a sudden well, you just awakened? Oh, I think in the spiritual realm, first of all, it was like God taking me from Abram land to Abraham land. Yeah. And so I actually took a road trip. I moved um, from New York, upstate New York to LA, and I drove by myself for most of the way. And um, so this was 
my biggest step of faith I've ever taken. But you were going to be an actress, right? So you were going yeah. there to be an actress. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm on the road, I don't have a place to stay. I just have two acquaintances and my whole family is in upstate New York. So that was such a big step of faith that I leaned into God like never that's before. Cool. So that's what I I be I was getting closer to God and then getting closer coming closer to him was putting a hunger in in me for more. It was like God was calling me to seek him, seek him. As the Bible says, you'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. So he was impressing upon me, seek, seek, seek. That's There's amazing. more. You haven't actually really totally found me yet. Just you've just heard about me, you know, but I'm going to I want to actually have an encounter with you. So I was seeking, I was seeking, and as I kept seeking him, I found him, meaning I found his power, I found his Holy Spirit, I started having encounters with his spirit, and I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and in, in that- In LA? Mm-hmm. By yourself? Um, I just, it, it was in a gathering. Yeah, it was in a gathering, it was but I was having these, it was like God was opening up my eyes in many different places. So cool. And when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it- it, that's the moment I feel like I'm, I met Jesus. My yeah. eyes opened up to his love. I had this knowing he's always been here. He knows me so intimately. He loves me so much, intimately me, and his plans for me are so good. And in that moment, I was moved to surrender everything. It was like the only thing that made sense and my biggest desire. So in that moment, you know, I've al I always would raise my hand at the altar calls, like, if you haven't surrendered everything, you know, yeah. I did that so many times. But this time, no one asked me to do it. It was no altar call. I had met Jesus and it was like my own wedding vows. Wow. Lord, I give you my entire life, my dreams, my plans, my will, everything. So... Everything changed from there. I was then set on fire for God, and I've never been the same since. The had, surrender. Had you ever preached before that? No, and I had no desire to preach. Public speaking was my biggest fear and weakness, literally. I Musical theater was my passion, so I could be on the stage in front of people without nerves, but with a script. Yeah. But when it came to speaking off the cuff, in college, I would do a presentation in front of only 10 people, and I would go brain dead and get so nervous. So nine months after I truly surrendered everything to God, and I said, you can, you can change my dream, my plans, everything. Take them away and give me yours. He did it. Wow. Nine months later, um, I went to a conference where a prophet was ministering. And he ended up prophesying to me that I was actually called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ, and I was called to reach the nations. This is a Tanzanian pastor, right? Yes. African his, Tanzanian his pastor. His name is Prophet Dr. Joe Davey, and he's actually now my spiritual father. Wow. But at the time, that was the first time I met him. Wow. And when I, first of all, when I saw him minister, I had never seen God move in power like that. And he prophesied this to me. And actually, at the time, I transitioned from pursuing acting to then music to be a Christian pop EDM singer songwriter. And I, as I was on a search to find my calling, I thought I'd finally found it. And I had so many friends and family cheering me on like never before, like never before in my life. They were like, this is amazing what you're doing. This is amazing what you're doing for God. You're so good at this. You're going to make it. So much like applause. So that to me was so much confirmation. I received this prophecy and I just knew in my spirit, God was speaking through this prophet did you have an experience? Like as he spoke to you, did you yeah. fall down on the floor or no, did no, angels it, show up? Or I, was like, I, you know, people ask these questions like, yeah. you, get, uh, you get a prophecy that changes your entire life. Like, was it an experience or was it just like, that's what I'm supposed to do? That's what I'm supposed to do. It, it was this knowing in my spirit, God is speaking now. Yep. I knew it. I, I never, never did I doubt it. Never did I question. Never was I like, should I take a poll? from people if they think this prophecy is true. I knew it. Um, and when I received this word, the first thing I was thinking was, because I knew God was speaking, I didn't question it, but the first thing I was speaking was, what, what about my dream of music? I really thought that was my calling. And number two, how? This is not my gifting, this is my weakness. Public speaking is my biggest fear and weakness. And I loved listening to ministers. I love listening to preachers. I remember actually listening to you and enjoying it. Listening to you. 
<laughs> I remember listening before that. And you that. read one of my books? Yeah, yes. And I remember, I, I love listening to preachers, but not one time was I like, I wonder if I'm supposed to do that or I would like to do that. Mm. Not once. Wow. So I'm like, what? This doesn't make sense. How can I do this? All like really fast in my head, this is going on. But amidst that, all of a sudden, God speaks in a still small voice. Remember Moses. Moses had a stutter. And when God called him to be a mouthpiece of him, to speak in front of the masses and to be a leader of God's people, he he was like, what? How can I do this? I can't speak. But God said, I made your mouth. I will give you the ability, the words to speak. So God spoke that in my spirit right then, that that is what he was calling me, just as like what he spoke to Moses. He was speaking that to me. And so honestly, it was really, looking back, like it was really like the angel appearing to Mary experience. Like, boom, this is shocking. This is your calling. Yeah, (laughs) this is your calling. And there was a little questioning, like how is this gonna happen, Mary had in her head. But very quickly after that, She just said, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it happen to me as you have said. Humble and obedient. And it was like quick obedience. It's like she already, you can tell she already was surrendered. You can tell she already had a servant heart. And I, God's timing is perfect. You know, there's so many people that want to know their callings and stuff. But I I always tell them, you got to wait. God's preparing you to be able to receive it. I look back and that's what God did for me. Like I was... A couple years before that, I was crying out, Lord, what's my calling? I'll do anything. But I didn't mean it from my heart because I hadn't surrendered everything yet. So he he led me to pursue acting at first. <laughs> he he knew what he was doing. He put hunger in me until I got to the point where I had surrendered everything. And so I was able to do what Mary did and just quickly say, okay. I mean, the only thing that matters to me is being in God's will. So, wow. okay, drop the music. It's sad. I don't understand it, but we I just have to do God's will. That's it. So <laughs> you get this prophetic word. You're apostle. Maybe you don't even quite know what apostle is yeah. at that point, yeah. right? You, it's like not something you're studying. You're yes. just like, mm-hmm. and you've never preached. Mm-hmm. You just get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So all the, all the power of God, it, 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 you've never really experienced the power of God yet until you receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And what did you do next? Like, did you like, well, go out on the street corner and preach or? Well, shortly after the Lord revealed and confirmed that that same prophet, Prophet Dr. Joe Davey, who prophesied to me my calling, was called by God to be my spiritual father, to be like how- And you'd li- never even met him before this? No, but- Were you afraid? No, because th- the thing is, is when you come like a child, God opens up your eyes and reveals everything to you when you're humble. When you come with skepticism, that's when you block your ears from hearing God's voice. Such a great word. Yeah, because Such. you know when when Jesus reveals this, when the, the the disciples came back from casting out demons for the first time, and they're like, "Wow, Jesus, the demons obeyed us." One of the first things that Jesus said is, "Well, he praises the Father, Father, I praise you for you have hidden you've hidden these things from those who are wise and proud and you've only revealed it to the childlike." So that shows that God reveals the truth to the childlike. We can hear his voice only when we're humble and when we're childlike. So, I was humble and childlike at that moment. Glory to God that he had equipped me in that way, that he gave me parents with such pure hearts that was such a big part of it that I didn't even have that like skepticism, judgmental stuff in me. Um, but, you know, the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits, not you shall know them by polls that you take from your friends So you and opinions of others. So were you in a pretty big crowd when he called you out and said that to you, like prophesied, or were you like one-on-one with them or? Um, no, it was actually just like a different, more like intimate gathering. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then after that, did you like, hey, I think you're my spiritual dad? How did that work? Because people ask this question all the time because we talk about having spiritual parents, right? Yeah. Because I think we're called to be disciples, meaning someone should be discipling us. Mm-hmm. And I have so many students like, well, how do I find my spiritual dad? What do I do if I think it's that, that, that woman or that, 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 that man? Yeah. What did you do? Well, my situation is very unique 
because of my calling yeah. and like my calling to reach the nations, you know? Yeah. So my calling was unique, but for me, it was so much like Elijah and Elisha. You know, yeah. if you read the story of Elijah and yeah. Elisha, Just like when, when Elisha was called, it's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> throws <laughs> like, his mantle on Yeah. Him. Elijah's like throws his mantle and it's like, Elisha, you'd be like, who is this dude? Yeah. What? You know? So it was kind of that way for me. The, really, the like, he, he, he shared more prophecies, more prophetic words, and I just knew it was God speaking. And so with, with those conversations led by God, it, was, it became clear that he was called to be my spiritual father, and I was called to receive impartation of anointing from him so good. and prophetic direction and equipping of how to walk in the power of God and also to be molded more into the image of God. And he's from Tanzania, so he did, he doesn't live in L.A. Right, where you met him. Right. So did you immediately go to Tanzania and and be discipled there? Or yeah. There well, I was discipled so much and continue to be over the phone thanks Got to it. technology. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. But um, yeah, I've been to Tanzania countless times. I, I can't tell you even the number, but yeah, especially in the beginning. Yeah. And And as I was saying, the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. Yeah. Not by traditions. Yeah. Not by polls of people, not by what makes sense and what's comfortable, because God moves outside of the box. God moves a new, th God does new things, and God uses people. Whoever He wants to use, He will use them. He uses them from different countries, cultures, races, Amazing. languages. There's Amazing. nobody who's superior. Just because we're American doesn't make us the most amazing preachers, the yeah. most chosen ones. Church. You know what I mean? So you get you get called, you get anointed. He does mm -hmm. some impartation. You start to get some training. Your first preach, how long is that before you have your first time you teach? So actually, this is wild. Okay. So remember, because <laughs> nine months is the you know, a, a prophetic meaning of birthing. Yeah, exactly. Right? So when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and first surrendered to God, nine months after that is when I received my calling and when my spiritual father became my spiritual father. And then to, this was not planned, to the day, nine months later, June 18th, um, 2017, was my first church service. I, I say starting the church, but it was more like there was two of us. Like and we were group. We were yeah. on, I actually went to Mah uh, Mulholland Drive and Overlook. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I bought a church building yeah. and I put flyers <laughs> everywhere. And because, you know, this was God's unique way. My calling is unique, you know? And it's not ev not ev not everyone has this path, but for me, this was God's hiding season for me. Um, like he didn't, you, you know, looking back, I can see he didn't want the church to be really big. He had, this was my wilderness season, my time of refining, my time to be molded. Sure, he was still using me, but nothing like compared to now um, in the beginning, you know? So, but just to be clear, you had never really preached before you started your own church. Whether I know it started small, but yeah, and it wasn't called like this is fivefold church, but it's when I technically count of when the ministry began because and, we never stop. I never stopped. <laughs> and you like did you just gather people in your house or something? Um, no, the first time was in a park, and then shortly after we went to the Mulholland Drive Overlook, a little outside uh, patch of grass, and um, I just went on Facebook groups, Christian Facebook groups. And I said, we called it a worship night, um, sunset worship night, something like that, I called it. And people came, people came, I was shocked. Just one person would come one time and one person was hiking and he stopped by and it was just me and my guitar, which I just taught myself how to play. It wasn't, I only knew four chords and it was not great to listen to. And um, I bought a battery operated microphone and little tiny speaker um, and stand and would just worship and preach uh, to just whoever would come, whether it was the one hiker or it was like five people or so from Facebook. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And so you started teaching and preaching. Yeah. And then how long before, like what I've watched a lot of is deliverances. I've seen you doing a lot of deliverance, public deliverance, where people come up on a platform yeah. or they're in the, they're in the congregation mm -hmm. and they begin to manifest. Mm -hmm. Did that happen right away? Absolutely not. As I said, this was my wilderness season. So it was three and a half years of ministering. Um, 
we were outside in the park or the overlook for a few months. And then in the fall of, 20, of 2017 is when I first had a, we were inside in a church. Well, we had a building. And the first year we had about 20 people. And the next year we had 15. <laughs> the next year we had 10. The next year we had five. And that was 2020. Wow. So then COVID hit and we went down to two. Me and my my dear friend and spiritual daughter and worship leader, Chantal. And then we couldn't have church in the building anymore because we were running the building. So then we went outside in the park. God spoke to me, I'm taking my church outside of the box, go in the park. And so then we ministered in the park and it was just Chantal and I setting up. We would have a cart and our church sign and a uh, piano. Now I had taught myself how to play piano. I had a couple piano lessons when I was a kid. It wasn't very good though. Um, piano and the battery operated microphone and speaker <laughs> and one music stand. And we would cart it sometimes in a hundred something degree weather. We would pull the cart, just the two of us. And all these things are piled on one cart. So sometimes it would, the things would fall off and we'd be like putting them back a couple times. And we'd set up for many Sundays one time, this was September of 2020, it was 100 and something degrees, but we still had church. And that day, one woman came, and so I'm preaching, and I'm just looking at her. And we had live stream going, though there was probably just a couple watching, if that. And as I'm preaching in the middle of the message, she walks away. So I then just turned to the live stream. I'm like, I guess I'll speak to the cameras now. <laughs> that was September of 2020. And every every time we had service, it was just a handful of people, random people usually. Wow. When it no one would really stick for the most part, just people in the park. But we would see God, I would see God move at that time through the prophetic. It was really just the prophetic. Uh, Lord, the Lord would lead me to speak prophetic words to people and they would be touched and they would tear up. Um, but at that time, there wasn't really hardly any testimonies of healings or deliverances. There was no manifestations. Sometimes wow. someone would fall back with God's power, but no kind of demonic manifestations. Wow. And then and then, how, when did the manifestations start happening? So there was a prophetic direction that my spiritual father gave me. And he said, at, at some point through these years that I'm believing in the promise of revival to break out, um, because he had also prophesied that the time for praying for revival has is over. God has heard America's prayers for revival, and he's answered them now. Revival is now. So that prophecy was around the similar time, just a little bit after I received my calling as an apostle. So I would actually declare revival is now at pretty much every single service. I wrote a song with John Toller, worship leader, Revival is Now. And this is when our church was declined every year. We would still, I would still declare revival as now. And I would believe in the promise every day. I would think of the promise. So anyways, my spiritual father prophesied. He, he's, he gave me this prophetic direction. He said, I see the way that this revival is breaking out and the promise is coming to pass is through one minute videos online. This is how the word's going to spread and the revival is going to break out. And so God is instructing you to put out one minute videos of ministry of you ministering. And at that time, I'd only, I had taught myself one time to make a movie, uh, I mean, to make a video on iMovie. That's all I knew. And I didn't have a team. Remember, we had like just a couple people at our church at that time. So, but, you know, God says to Moses, what's in your hand? What's in your hand? Exactly. You know, so in my hand is the ability to teach myself <laughs> a brain, right? So I taught myself how to edit. And so I started working hard and putting out videos. <laughs> And so for about three years, these videos had hardly any views, interactions, and it didn't even grow really. And I, But I just kept going because I believe that prophetic word. And so then one day, this was right before, it was like a day and a half before my 30th birthday. Um, God gives me this, uh, uh, this vision to uh, put together a video that shows a montage of God moving powerfully over the past year. <laughs> Now, there's no deliverances. There was one healing, but I put that one healing testimony and the other few um, 
times of God moving in power. Oh, and I prayed for orf- orphans in Tanzania one time, and God, God healed them of HIV. Glory to God. Wow. But that was like it. It was like just a couple healing testimonies. But praise God, that's <laughs> still a, that's. Anyway, yeah. yeah. And so I put that video together. And at the end, I just did a simple declaration prayer over people. One minute video, 59 seconds on TikTok. So I put that video out on December 30th. And by the next day, it went so viral. It had 1 million views by my 30th birthday on January 1st, 2021. Wow. And But the greater miracle is that there was <laughs> thousands of comments of people testifying of miracles they received while watching the video. Now, wow. I had only seen God use me to release healing to somebody one through online one time before that, and that was two months prior, and that was actually in the video. Now it was thousands of people. Wow. It was shocking. And so that was the beginning of the promise being fulfilled. Glory to God. People were saying, I felt something leave me as I watched this. And now I feel peace. (laughs) I felt pain leave me as I watched this. It was a time of so much COVID. And people were saying, I had COVID and now I feel great after this, healed. Um, And so then I started, oh, well, actually, with that video, all this, because it went viral, all of a sudden I had a following for the first time. And this started on TikTok. And then so I started going live twice a week and God just decided to release his anointing wow. and do so many miracles on every live since that day. And then the following just grew. The video started circulating more and more. And our church, which was in the park still, had about five people that were not sticking, just random people yeah. um, that January. And so we're seeing revival online, but not in person yet. And I'm hungering to see revival in person but grateful for what God's doing online. And little by little, because of the videos going viral, people started to trickle in more and more. So we grew from about five people that January to about 20 or so in March of that year. And March, uh, in March 21st, 2021, I was driving to church and I was more expectant than ever in the park, church in the revival in the park, we called it. I was more expectant than ever because two different people wrote to me online saying, I saw your video and one of the videos that went around online and God's leading me to fly out from the East Coast to come to your service in the park. Wow. This is when we had 20 people. <laughs> so I knew the principle of hunger. So I was more expectant than I've ever been. Like I remember driving like clear as day, Lord, what are you going to do today? So even though, I was ex- even though I was expectant, God far surpassed my expectations. Wow. When I got there, first of all, we were in an amphitheater and we couldn't reserve it because it was COVID times. There was a gathering of like 60 people doing a social gathering in our amphitheater. And not, not for you. They were doing a separate their system. own gathering. Wow. And I'm like, no, there's people flying to come here today. <laughs> so it was really a spiritual battle. And long story short, we finally were able to have this space and they just we talked them into like just going off on the grass because they were just socializing at that yeah. point. But then they blasted heavy metal music. <laughs> we worship still. <laughs> and then I started, I started, <laughs> I started preaching and I so especially at that point. I don't, I'm not like a typical preacher, I guess you should could say. I just speak usually in a normal voice. Yeah. That year I was, I mean, that day I was preaching <laughs> loud, screaming on the mic because I didn't want those people to miss out on what God had for them. I said, get real close. They came close and um, heavy metal music playing the whole time. And, and these people are gathering like a party just like 10 feet from us. So... Um, then I call the one woman forward. She's, she was from Massachusetts and she came because of seeing the video and she saw God in the video, she said. So I start praying for her. And as I prayed for her, she falls back with the power of God without me touching her. Now I'd seen God move like that before, but the next thing that happened was new that I'd never seen in my ministry before. She started convulsing. And I immediately discerned, part, mostly from seeing my spiritual father minister, I immediately discerned, this is a demon manifesting in her. So I started command, I started to command the demon to go, and that's the first time I had ever done that. <laughs> and as I did that, a demon then starts speaking out of her and says, I don't want her to preach. 
I don't want her to preach is what wow. the demon was screaming. Yeah. So you can see her, the calling on her life. Wow. And so then I just walked in my authority like never before for the first time. And I commanded the demon to leave her. And as I commanded it, just simply without touching her, uh, the demon left with so much force that it looked that she fell over. It looked like someone pushed her. And there's a story like that in the Bible well, yeah, where yeah. someone, and they think, is the person dead? No, just sleeping, Jesus says. And that literally happened. It looked like someone pushed her. We have it on video, hallelujah. Um, and she, her head fell on the one gentleman that was at church that day on, on his foot. And she was immediately asleep. And she stayed sleeping for a while. And she woke up and she testified later. Wow. She was set free. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So that was the first time uh, deliverance happened. A demon manifested and was cast out at my church. And now that happens like really frequently, right? Yeah. It so looks the, like at the least floodgates just open from there. It's yeah. just like God decided. And I'm, you had never done a, a deliverance before. No, no. Wow. And so actually the video of that deliverance <laughs> went viral. And people need freedom. Absolutely. They are hungry. They're hungry for God's power and they're hungry for freedom. And it's rare. And so... I really saw the, the reality of that when I saw people started flocking. People started flying in from all over the place pretty much immediately every week. And so we grew from about 20 people that day to every week it, we grew, we grew, we grew. Two months later on May 30th, 2021, 300 people showed up wow. and was overflowing out, out of the amphitheater. And deliverance was happening everywhere. Wow. So remember in September, which was just months before, there was one person and they left in the middle of a message. So now the walls of Jericho had come down. Wow. God is, was faithful. The promise came to pass and the, the amphitheater was overflowing with revival. When, you, when somebody gets delivered, have you followed up with them or discipled them? Or it's like, do you, do you have any kind of theology around closing the doors that kind of that gave opportunity for them to be demonized in the first place? Is there any is there any follow up with those people? Absolutely. So <laughs> I have a four part sermon series of how to maintain your deliverance. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah, and on my YouTube. It's is it called Walking in Miracles? That's actually my e course. Oh yes, you have an e course. Okay, well tell us about that one first. Yeah the 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 maintaining your deliverance. Yes. Yeah. So on my YouTube, it's a four part sermon series. So it's like pretty much almost probably six or more hours of teaching and equipping, going over all of the schemes of the enemy to try to come back. Because we know in scripture, it says yeah. that once a demon leaves, he wants to come back and bring more. So yes. we have to be so aware, so on guard, so surrendered to God and know the enemy's schemes. So yes, every every time, um, when, whenever we're able to connect with people, whether it's online, in person, announcing it at church, announcing it at the events or sending emails, there's always the message, watch these messages and don't just watch them one time watch them again and again be a disciple have you seen <clears throat> someone gets delivered have you seen transformation in their life after that yes like the, like save their marriage you know deliver them from depression tell tell one of those stories yeah i've seen both of those and so many i there's just one that comes to mind right now i want to share <clears throat> so this woman she was in her low 20s, I believe, early 20s. And um, she came to Fivefold Church. This was like a little more than a year ago, year, year and a half ago. And I've never seen someone so desperate for deliverance. You know, like the woman with the issue of yeah, blood? She exactly. was desperate. This woman had this desperation. She ran up to the stage and looked at me like this. And she said, please help me, please help me. I need freedom. And I've seen a lot of people desperate, but this was another level. And I invited her up and um, I asked her, is there anything you want to renounce? The Lord asked, led me to ask her that. And she, she had a list. She had prepared a list. Wow. And, mm -hmm, and she, she, started test of, she started renouncing. And, and the minute she starts renouncing, I think she just said like two or three things. The demons take, start taking over her because she was where the power of God yeah. was. So the yeah. anointing, just like in Started the times of Jesus, yeah. The surface, yeah, yeah, and then the renouncing is making them lose their their legal grip. Yeah. 
So that's why they're manifesting so much. So she immediately goes to the ground and she's convulsing and the eyes are bulging out and the mouth is open. Like it's really the demons taking over her so yeah. completely. And it was so shocking for, I mean, this deliverance actually went very viral with I think more than 30 million views online. Wow. Because it's so shocking. And yeah. then you see God set her free. Yeah. And then she just stayed on the altar, on the stage for the entire rest of the service. Everyone was cleaning up and they just left the stage there for her. And she just kept laying there and she described it later that it was like something, she said something like she felt like God was rocking her, I think she said. Like it was the most peaceful wow. moment she's ever felt in her entire life. Now she sings on our worship team. So beautiful. And she has testified that, well, first of all, she had so much bondage, so much. The big things were, was, um, was mental torment, ment mental illness, and suicidal thoughts. She said it was pretty much every single day that her mind would be bombarded with suicidal thoughts saying, you should kill yourself, you should kill yourself. She had attempted it several times. Wow. And she was a believer throughout all of this. Yeah, so it was oppression. Yeah. And so once she was set free, the suicidal thoughts left completely. So good. And the thoughts of depression left completely. The mental torment, mental illness left completely. And now she is living in peace and joy and abundant life. And she has a beautiful anointed voice and she sings on the worship team at my church, Fivefold Church. And when every time I see her, I can't help but think about the goodness of God. And it, it's so beautiful. I love that the world is seeing this. Like I love that I'm, I'm so grateful for things going viral because people need to know what Jesus can do. People need to so know the reality good. about the spiritual realm. And they also need to know that there's an answer. The answer is Jesus, the deliverer, the healer. And that it doesn't matter how oppressed you are, how dark your past was, how many demons you had. It's wiped away by the blood of Jesus when you come to him. He'll set you free. He'll transform you into a disciple of him. So like this story reminds me of Mary Magdalene who had many demons and she allowed her story to be told in the Bible even though maybe it was could have been embarrassing. Yeah, exactly. But now she, then she was a follower of Jesus, a disciple of Jesus. So beautiful. Okay, you wrote a book, The Secret of the Anointing. Yes. How can people get that book? By going to my website, ApostleCatherineCrick.com. Okay. Or 5fchurch.org and Amazon, anywhere where books are sold. Okay, and we'll put a link down below, team, for that. And then also you have an e-course called Walking in Miracles. Yes. And you can find that also on your website. That's right. Okay, we'll put a link to that too. Catherine, as we close, would you just, there'll be a lot of people that as soon as they see your name, they'll be watching this this uh, this this podcast. Would you just end in prayer for us, please? Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you for your power, your anointing that you have brought to this earth, to the body of Christ. And I thank you, Jesus, for all the people you're about you. to free and heal right now by your power through the screen. I break every curse upon mm -hmm. every person right now. And I declare every spirit that's been tormenting you, tormenting you in the mind, bringing suicidal mm -hmm. thoughts, condemnation, depression, anxiety, addiction, mm -hmm. division in marriages. I declare it mm -hmm. all must leave now in Jesus' name. Any kind of demonic spirit that's been tormenting you in the mind or your body, it must go now. Mm -hmm. Let there be freedom and healing now in Jesus' name. And may God's power move through you and touch you. May you have an encounter with His mm -hmm. Spirit now. May your eyes open up now to mm -hmm. His love for you and His yes. power. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Catherine, thank you so much for being on. And uh, catch us this next week too. We love you. We want you to prosper. And we want you to change the world. God bless.